Hey everyone, welcome to the presentation today on GitOps with Flux and OpenShift. My name is Andrew Block. I'm a distinguished architect with Red Hat. I specialize in containers, GitOps, security, and automation. I'm a contributor to several open source projects, including a being a maintainer on the Helm project, a package manager for Kubernetes, and SigStore, a, a project that aims to solve how you sign and verify content. I am an author. I have written several books on the topic of cloud native technologies, the first one being Learn Helm, which provides an overview of how to deploy and use Helm as a package manager for Kubernetes and securing Kubernetes secrets, a book coming out shortly on how you manage all aspects of Kubernetes security. I have spoken at a number of public conferences, specifically recently at GitOpsCon and KubeCon. So let's talk about today's environment. Every, every organization is looking for some type of an advantage in the ability to leverage digital technology, digital transformation, DevOps, and security. But how can they actually achieve this? Well, first of all, they need to be innovative. They need to not look at the past, but look into the forward, look into the future by embarking in new ideas. But they must do so in a stable fashion. They must have consistency and have stability in, in creating a ability to create a standardized method of building deploying and monitoring. And then finally, utilizing automation for, to eliminate all of those manual, manual tasks that many of us in many organizations have faced in the past. And what are the ingredients that make this possible? Number, number one is containers and a container orchestration system. And that's really where Kubernetes comes in. The containers enables an atomic method for packaging all of your application dependencies all into that single atomic unit. It also enables repeatability across any environment, whether it be on your local machine, in a development environment, or all the way through to production. And by leveraging a container orchestration system, you can then be able to manage at enterprise scale. You can scale up, scale down, and react as new requests and new requirements come into your organization. Now, containers are only one small facet of being able to be successful in cloud native. The next is that ability to be repeatable and automated. And that's really what GitOps provides. It's that centralized source of truth, making sure in leveraging declarative configurations of both your infrastructure and your application. And then in addition, it's that tooling to support application promotion configuration, all the way, as I mentioned, through different layers of your software development lifecycle. So once again, we're getting there, but there's still pieces missing. The DevOps really got us to bring together our development teams and our operations teams to, in, to participate in software delivery. But especially these days, security is front and center. It seems like there's a brand new vulnerability every 20 seconds coming out in the industry and your organization needs to be able to react effectively. And more and more organizations are starting to leverage the concept of DevSecOps, the ability to take the, all the greatness of DevOps that you and your organization has, has achieved and in introducing security for front and center throughout the entire process. So no longer is security you know, brought in at the end, it is brought in right at the forefront so you can have an engaged conversation with your security teams and your entire organization to better understand the requirements not that your organization and your applications may need to consider when being able to look to developing and deploying to cloud native environments. You may still be saying, I only develop and deploy my local data center. I don't have to worry about this, but that's not true because threats you know, are present in all environments. You don't have to be in the public cloud. You can be in any environment and there can still be threats that you need to consider. But in addition to threats, you also have regulations. For those of you in the government space and then in the financial services industry, uh, you definitely are well aware of the different regulations that you and your applications teams must be able to comply with. And that's really something that, that DevSecOps really can help provide and provide solutions for. And OpenShift, the OpenShift container platform and OpenShift provide a way that highlights all of these different areas and more. It provides the ability to it's a container orchestration platform built on Kubernetes, but it has a lot of features out of the box that you can take advantage of automatically and get started quickly. It has that self-service capabilities for you to point and click and get access immediately. It supports multiple languages. It 
really brings together different parts of your organizations in a collaborative fashion, but a lot of it comes down to the security. It enables multi-tenancy and it is secure and enterprise grade by default. And there is no vendor lock-in because it's open source. You know, it's using a lot of the same technologies that you're very familiar with, you know, everything from Kubernetes to your container orchestration system, as well as other technologies like Fluent D, Kibana. Um, I could go on forever on the different components, Prometheus, you name it. But it, it, it provides that holistic solution that you and your organization can take advantage with really fast. So I want to talk about how Flux and OpenShift is really that perfect match. Getting started with Flux and OpenShift is as simple as possible. It's a one-click deployment. There's an operator that's available in the operator hub that provides that seamless integration and deployment of the Flux platform. You have the ability to leverage policy management to ensure that only certain users are able to access not only Flux from a management standpoint, but they then have the ability to deploy and manage resources in different parts of the platform. You can use GitOps and a lot of the tools that Flux provides to enforce those security controls that your, that your security teams want to make sure that are implemented throughout your platform so your developers and operations teams will be able to operate in a, in a safe fashion. And then finally, most importantly, it's all based on GitOps. You can leverage the, the capabilities that, that Flux provides out of the box that everyone from your platform teams, your application administrators, everyone and your developers can take advantage of this holistic solution all on OpenShift. It really is that perfect match. So as I mentioned, getting started with Flux and OpenShift is really easy. There's, there's that operator available on Operator Hub now. For those of you who may not have heard of what an operator is or familiar with it, an operator really is a method of packaging, deploying, and managing Kubernetes applications. But it goes one step further. It has that intelligence out of the box to understand exactly what this application has. Flux has, like any application on, on Kubernetes, has some certain considerations. The operator has the knowledge and intelligence built in to understand how to best tune the application for deployment in an OpenShift and Kubernetes environment. So let's talk about uh, how Flux and OpenShift can be realized with a great demo. So some of the key themes that we're going to highlight as part of this demo, number one, we're first going to deploy Flux on OpenShift by going into the operator hub. We're going to talk about how platform teams can manage the deployment of namespaces on a Kubernetes environment. We'll then focus then on the security aspects of things and isolate different workloads within different namespaces. And then we'll also deploy an application to multiple namespaces. And then finally, we'll also go in and see how application and SRE teams can go in and monitor the, the current state of the Flux platform. And then in addition to that, we're going to utilize policy enforcement. You know, security is multifaceted. And one way to achieve uh, security is through the ability to leverage policies and policy management tools. Now, two of the primary tools that are out there in the Kubernetes space is the Gatekeeper project and Kyverno. For those of you who aren't familiar with either of these projects, let's start with Gatekeeper. Gatekeeper is a CNCF graduated project. Uh, it is deployed as a cluster operator using Flux and it is available in an implementation of the Kubernetes native open, it's an implementation of open policy agent in a Kubernetes native way. It allows you to leverage, uh, leverage custom resource definitions in OpenShift and Kubernetes to be able to apply OPA policies. But what we're gonna focus on today is Kyberno. This is a newer project. It's a CNCF sandbox project, and we're gonna deploy it as a controller on OpenShift using Flux. And it's really cool because it's very declarative and allows you to apply policies in a framework that's very familiar to just creating other resources in Kubernetes and OpenShift. It just has a Kyberno custom resource. And, and from there, you're able to create different policies based on different conditions. So we're gonna walk through some of those during our demonstration today. So let's go ahead and let's put the eyes of three different personas. First, we're gonna talk about Alice. We're gonna start off with the persona of Alice. She's a, a platform manager. She is gonna manage the deployment and in, 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 in installation of the Flux platform, as well as provisioning resources for our development teams. John is a developer who wants to deploy to non-production environments and do some testing. And then we also have Frank, who is from our SRE team 
that's going to be managing our application in our higher level environments and production. So we're going to showcase how not only Flux can be deployed, but how different application teams can work in a multi tenant and facet on OpenShift, all managed through Flux and a lot of security considerations that are part of this whole entire ecosystem. And then finally, we're going to show how OpenShift and Flux can be integrated together from a monitoring standpoint. Flux emits a number of Prometheus-based metrics, and we can integrate into the onboard Prometheus environment that OpenShift provides for the ability to, to look into the current state of our Flux environment directly from the OpenShift console. So let's go ahead and let's put the mindset of Alice on and look at installing Flux on OpenShift. And that's what we're going to start with. So as you see here, I've logged into my OpenShift platform. I've logged in as the user Alice, and I'm going to go ahead and deploy Flux. This is Operator Hub. Operator Hub shows all the different operators that are available for use. I can go in and drill into the different categories that are available for deployment, but I, but I know that I definitely want to just install Flux. So I can just go here and look at Flux. We'll go ahead and click on Create and Install. It says it's going to be installed into a namespace called Flux System, and we're going to go ahead and click on Install. And just like that, two or three clicks away, we have the installation of Flux and the deployment of the Flux platform. So to support this entire um, this demonstration, there's a Git repository behind this. And we'll share a link later in the presentation that talks about how you can get your hands on it and demonstrate it in your own environment. Now, while this while the operator is installing, I'm going to go ahead and navigate over to this, this um, Git repository. It's really just showcasing everything we're going to walk through today from our different personas, as I mentioned. We have Alice, John, and Frank is our three personas. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we've already logged in as Alice, who is our platform administrator. So we know that we've already taken care of all the prerequisites. And the last thing we're going to do is we've done the deployment and we're going to start off by first defining source. This is the first step that you want to do when, when working with, with Flux is you're going to have some source code located somewhere. Remember, we're implementing GitOps here. So we're going to bring in our platform team project that has all of our definitions ready to go. So I'm going to take this, take the content of this repository, of this um this code snippet. It's a Git repository type in Flux. It's a custom resource. We'll go over here. We confirm that our operator is currently running. If we go over here and look at pods and go into the Flux system, you'll see we have all of our different controllers up and running. Notice we didn't have to worry about complex configurations. We just went to Operator Hub, clicked on Install after we searched for the Flux um, operator. And away we go. I'm going to first go ahead and create that Git repository resource. We'll just go to the import YAML page. We'll say that we want to create a platform team Git repository. It's going to be deployed to the platform, to the namespace Flux system. And then we have all the details of where that source code is located and what branch we're running on. We'll go ahead and click on Create. And in a second, you'll see uh, the Flux um, controllers and the source controller was able to realize the configuration and was successful in adding it to um, the OpenShift platform. The next thing we're going to do is, as I mentioned, one of the one of the areas that we wanted to investigate is the ability to leverage uh, OpenShift monitoring, be able to integrate Flux's own Prometheus-based metrics into OpenShift, and that's what we're going to do first. We're going to create this customization resource that targets the ability to integrate the two systems. Once again, going back to the ad panel, clicking on paste and clicking create. And just as easy as adding the Git source, we were able to add the customization uh, asset, which will then now integrate the two systems together. We'll come back to this a little later on when we showcase uh, how we can monitor the different parts of the platform. Now, we, what we then want to do is we want to we want to integrate one of our policy engines. The repository has examples for both policy engines, either Kyberno or Gatekeeper. Uh, I like to use Kyberno. Um, it's, a, it's, it's very, very intuitive. It's simple, and we'll kind of walk through some of the policies later on. But let's go ahead and create our, 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 our once again, another customization called Kyberno, which is going to not only deploy Kyberno, but also deploy the policies to allow us to enforce additional security constraints on top of what OpenShift provides out of the box. As I mentioned, uh, uh, OpenShift has a multi-tenant design out of the box. 
which allows you to enable not only role-based access control provided by Kubernetes, but also network-based access control. So you can leverage a lot of the customizations that are found in from Kubernetes by leveraging network policies to be able to isolate at a networking standpoint. With our policy engine now running, we can just double, we can just confirm that the policy engine is running. Uh, you can go here and look at the Kyverno namespace. It's now available. We can look at all the different different resources that are deployed. Our Kyverno controller is running. So our policy management tool is now in place. We have not only Flux as a, as a deployment, but we now have our policy engine now running. The next step we want to do is we want to go ahead and carve out a, a good use case. A good use case is we want to deploy an application to two namespaces. We want to deploy one to a staging environment, which is more like development. And then a second one is a production environment, which allows you to uh, realize what a production like uh, deployment would look like of a sample application. The key thing is, is that our other two personas, Frank and John, are only going to be able to look at resources in one of those namespaces. John is the developer, John is a member of the development team. So they're only going to get access to the apps namespace. And Frank, as our operations team, is only going to get access to our prod namespace. But as Alice currently, as our platform SRE, SME, pardon me, we're going to first deploy our staging environment. Once again, another Flux resource called multi-tenant staging. We'll deploy it out. We'll see that it was applied successfully. If we go and look at our projects, you'll see that we now have an apps project. And if we switch over to the other, other perspective, there are two perspectives in OpenShift, one that is more administrator focused and one that is more developer focused. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and log out of Alice, log in as John and confirm that they now have access to just that, just that namespace. And as you can see, instead of seeing all those namespaces that we saw as Alice, the administrator, we are just going to look at John at, at, at the apps namespace. In the apps namespace, we're going to look at all the different deployments that are available, all the applications. As soon as that comes back, you'll see that we're going to have one pod that is currently running, which is going to contain our pod info application. As you can see, it's up and running. We go to the URL you'll see we are able to get our application just like that. Look how fast it was. Not only did we deploy uh, Flux, we also looked at Alice deploying a staging dev environment for John to make use of. Let's log out of, of John and log back in as Alice, who is going to now take the role of deploying our production environment. In a similar fashion that we did a moment ago, we're going to apply another Flux resource called multi-tenant production, which will allow us to leverage the deployment of our prod namespace. Just go ahead and create. We see that it is applied successfully. We'll go back once again, let's close out of that, to our Git repository and we'll log on as Frank. Frank should only have access to our prod, our, our prod namespace. So we'll log in as Frank. And you'll see we only have apps pride. He doesn't see apps, just the, the regular apps, because as an SRE, he's only concerned about the production environment. And as you can see, we're spinning up our other resources. We now have two running because remember we're in production. We want to make sure we have redundancy here. And as you see, we'll go browse the URL that is exposed. And you see we now are currently running in pride. So we've now demonstrated how we can leverage OpenShift to not only deploy uh, Flux, but have Flux manage two separate namespaces in a multi-tenant capacity. So John and, and Frank can be productive and successful in their own paradigms, whether they want to be in, from a development perspective or an SRE perspective, just how easy it was. The last thing we're going to showcase is how we can look at some metrics that are exposed by OpenShift. We're going to once again log out and log back in as Alice, who as a platform administrator, is really interested in the metrics that are, are exposed by Flux. Now, OpenShift provides metrics out of the box built on Prometheus. So if we look at the observe and go to the metrics, you'll see we have a Prometheus dashboard here. We're able to 
provide any type of queries that we want that is in PromQL. So we'll go back to our repository one more time where we have a set of, we have a set of uh, monitoring um, uh, queries. Let's go and look at all the different CPU metrics that are from every different component of Flux. We'll go in and just put together this uh, little Prometheus query. And you can see, just like that, all of our Flux resources are integrated to OpenShift's integrated monitoring stack, so you can easily monitor and alert on the different type of resources that are available. And as you can see here, we have all of our different Flux pods and all the different metrics that are available. We have our Helm controller, our source controller, our customized controller, our image automation controller, our image reflector, and our notification controller. All these are being brought into the OpenShift platform, exposed via Flux, and then being able to integrate them. And if we wanted to choose, we can go in and make use of some of the alerting capabilities that are not only part of Flux as, as part of its notification components in capacity, but leverage some of the features that are out of the box with OpenShift, leveraging tools like Alert Manager and hooking into our other systems like a SIEM system to be able to really be able to alert different platform teams and application teams if the values that are being exposed here fall outside of uh, normal operation. So I want to quickly showcase how the two different components, both OpenShift and Flux, can be enabled really easily, and the integration provides great use not only for application teams, but for platform administrators. So if you're interested in learning more about this demo, uh, you can go to the following link. Obviously, you then have the different resources for uh, Flux, but if you're interested in finding out more about OpenShift, uh, go to try.openshift.com. Thanks a lot, everyone.